The U.S.-Mexico border, it's not just about illegal immigration and drug trafficking, it's also about vital communication when it comes to things like the environment or even border security. We don't see two countries, we see a region. And when it comes to the border, certain things know no boundaries, things like air and wind, water, and even music. We are not enemies. These two countries are not enemies, we are friends and music reminds us of that tonight. Now, while Donald Trump is stirring things with Mexico, people who live and work along the border are choosing to do things differently. This is Arizona Week. Hi, I'm Nancy Montoya, in for Lorraine Rivetta. Now, the likely presidential candidate for the Republican Party, Donald Trump, has not backed off his campaign promise to build a wall and to get Mexico to pay for it. Now, that has stirred controversy from the Mexican federal government. But at the state level, between Arizona and Sonora officials, things are different. Instead of igniting controversy, they've decided that they want to nurture cooperation. It's called the Border 2020 Project, and it was first inspired a world away in Sweden more than four decades ago. Stockholm, Sweden, June 12, 1972. Mrs. Indira Gandhi, Prime Minister of India, arrived today to address the first United Nations Conference on the Human Environment. It is clear that the environmental crisis which is confronting the world will profoundly alter the future destiny of our planet. 1,200 delegates from 113 nations met for 11 days. In the end, the conference established the Earth Watch system to identify environmental problems on a worldwide scale and to get countries that share a border to work together. I think under the circumstances, four years after politicians in particular and people in general uh, began to realize we were in the middle of an environmental crisis, I think more... The United States took major steps to guard against water and air pollution, but it would be more than a decade before the U.S. and Mexico would establish the La Paz Agreement in 1983. It was a pledge signed by U.S. President Ronald Reagan and Mexican President Miguel de la Madrid. It was a landmark agreement, even today, that remains the keystone pact for binational cooperation on environmental protection of the border region. The La Paz Agreement has a new name and an expanded mission. It's now called the Border 2020 Project. Okay, we're going to get started. If you can please take your seats. This is the group that represents Arizona and the state of Sonora. They meet every three months. Spanish and English are intertwined, flowing effortlessly between languages. For those who speak only one language, there are professional interpreters sending translations over earpieces. Conducting this type of business to make sure that we have a clean environment. And so the work begins. Work. Through partnerships, this group is working to protect Arizona and Sonora's borderlands. Between Sonora and Arizona, there are 389 miles of shared border. Officials from both states have stepped up efforts to protect the delicate environmental balance of the region. Now, one area that concerns both states is the Santa Cruz River that flows in and out of both countries. Along the Arizona-Sonora border, we share the natural resources of air, water, plants, and animals. The most threatened is water. Amanda Stone works for the Arizona Office of Border and Environmental Protection. Her Sonora counterpart is Luis Carlos Salazar. The two primary areas that we've been spending a lot of time on are um, migration, the migration of water from Nogales, Sonora to Arizona. Um, as you know, the Santa Cruz River goes into Mexico and then come, turns and comes back north into Arizona. Uh, and then there's also an area called uh, Nogales Wash that runs through Nogales, Sonora, 
um, that wash uh, collects some of the surface debris and contamination that is released in Nogales, Sonora, and that comes into Arizona. And when she says contaminants, she also means raw sewage. In the past five years, Arizona has advised Sonora in ways to reduce raw sewage flowing into the Santa Cruz. On the U.S. side, in nearby Rio Rico, a water treatment plant finishes the job before clean water is released into the Arizona side of the Santa Cruz. The majority of the water that is treated from uh, northern no Nogales, Sonora, is actually treated in Arizona. So we've been working, uh, continuing to work with very cooperatively with um, Sonora and with Nogales on trying to um, minimize the contaminant load coming into that surface water that is then going into the treatment water system in Arizona. Luis Carlos Salazar from Sonora says that like the Santa Cruz that flows both ways, so must communication and cooperation. ¿Qué es la importancia de tener una relación donde ustedes pueden trabajar juntos entre México y Estados Unidos y más entre Sonora y Arizona? Principalmente la obligación de nosotros como autoridades es aterrizar las, las um, eh, necesidades e inquietudes de la población de ambos eh, este, estados que exigen que exista esta relación. No es algo que los gobiernos estén eh, inventando o estén eh, queriendo protagonizar, sino que nosotros oficializamos esa relación que ya existe desde hace muchos años entre las poblaciones de ambos estados. Entonces, Ustedes tienen que trabajar sin fronteras, ¿verdad? Independientemente de los acuerdos, de los papeles que se firmen, eh, la relación entre ambos estados, ahí está, los animalitos no conocen de fronteras, el aire no conoce y el agua no conoce de, 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 de este tipo de divisiones que los humanos hemos hecho. Amanda, uh, Luis is talking a lot about how your working relationship must be one without borders. There's so much cultural link between these two communities. Uh, so it's not just an environmental link, it's a cultural link, and it's also a very strong economic link. And so uh, we, we simply have to work together to meet the needs of the environment and the people living on both sides of the border. So it, it, um, we're very fortunate in the relationship that we've had in the past, and we're very encouraged by the relationship that we're developing with the new administrations. That this is a Border 2020 is an important program and an important component to strengthening these relationships, and so we're very excited about that. Stone says that because the Mexicans are doing their part to reduce raw sewage entering the Santa Cruz, the Arizona side has been able to protect critical water resources for southern Arizona. It's a very, very vital source of surface water uh, for the Santa Cruz River. I mean, that, that ecosystem is thriving at this point. To keep it that way, the strong partnership must continue. Salazar emphasizes that the binational environmental team must not be distracted by the direction of political winds from either country. We have a, a, a team of people working. They, they are specialists in, in their field. There, there's very good people working in Arizona and in Sonora uh, in terms of environmental uh, issues. The work of the teams is going to be uh, crucial in, in this relationship that we'll have in the future. Projects that protect the border environment of both countries can be costly. So who pays? The answer? both countries. One source of funding was created in 2004. That's when the North American Development Bank was launched. The Development Bank certifies and funds environmental infrastructure projects in border area communities. And both countries have contributed almost $30 million to the fund. Stone says environmental solutions must also have an economic component. Governor Ducey and our administration is very, very focused on economic development along the corridor and uh, specific to our agency, we want to promote environmentally responsible economic growth. And so that's really the nexus between um, helping people have a healthy economy in a healthy environment. Those, those two concepts really have to mesh. Without a 
healthy economy, it's difficult to have a healthy environment. In the past 10 years in Sonora, almost 55,000 homes got first-time access to safe drinking water, and almost a half a million homes along the border got access to wastewater treatment services. The result? The reduction of waterborne disease on both sides of the border by more than 60 percent. Amanda Stone says that confirms that working together works. There's simply no choice in the matter. I think uh, environmental contamination, of course, does not recognize international political borders. Another partnership that serves border communities is the relationship between the mayors of sister cities. We spent some time with the mayors of Nogales North and Nogales South and found that when solving major problems, both mayors feel that two heads are better than one. Almost 400,000 people live in the twin border cities, or as the people who live here call it, ambos Nogales, which translates into both of them. Around 50,000 are on the U.S. side in Santa Cruz County, the rest on the Mexican side. Now, the two men who carry the lion's share of the responsibility for dealing with the two border communities are John Francis Doyle, the mayor of Nogales, Arizona, and David Galindo, the mayor of Nogales, Sonora. The 39-year-old is a seasoned politician with strong ties to the Mexican federal government. He represents Nogales in Mexico's lower house, the Chamber of Deputies in Mexico City. And it was Galindo who led protests all over Mexico against Arizona's SB 1070 and encouraged Mexicans not to shop or do business in Arizona a few years ago. But that was then. Today, as the mayor, Galindo says Arizona Governor Doug Ducey has opened the door to a better relationship with people across the border. And I go out for a walk. Uh, On the U.S. side, uh, Mayor right Doyle, 20 years older than his counterpart and retired from the U.S. Army Air Missile Defense System, so says like they were both like born in their respective like communities like and want nothing to do with no, building geez. more walls. Doyle says they are more about opening doors. Oh, definitely, definitely. That's what it's all about. Walter, a thing of the past. It was the United States that helped bring down the Berlin Wall. Now we're going to get somebody with a twisted idea to come and, and start building walls again? I, 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 there's something wrong with that, with that uh, train of thought. What is your working relationship? Trabajan bien juntos? Well, yeah. I'll stop uh, an occasion uh, with the mayor's office just uh, w without announcing myself. <laughs> but, but usually so, he's busy and, and sometimes I miss him. But the same, the same way with him if he needs and it's that type of relationship that has gone into working on the deadly problem of the drug cartels that impact both Nogaleses. Somos la única frontera de a lo largo de México y Estados Unidos que tenemos un comité de seguridad que se reúne de manera mensual. Nos reunimos en la aduana de Nogales, Arizona. Hay gente del Cherifato, gente de la DEA, del FBI, de la Sedena. Y de trabajan la Federal. juntos. Trabajamos juntos, intercambiamos información. The mayors say that the latest statistics show that crime is down 70 percent from this time two years ago on the Arizona side and by 40 percent on the Mexican side. Mayor Doyle is quick to add that during his regular early morning walks along the border, he is more afraid of the area's wildlife than the crime rate. The only thing I worry about sometimes are the javelina pigs that are running loose close to my house. I always worry that they might be rabid and I might get you know, attacked by one. When it comes to communication, the mayors are more inclined to stay in touch with the social media tool, WhatsApp. Tenemos incluso un chat de WhatsApp donde estamos las autoridades. El otro día se presentó un incidente en la aduana donde llegó un carro y parecía que era un carro bomba. Por el chat nos coordinamos, cerramos del lado mexicano el cruce, desviamos a la gente, del lado americano hicieron lo que les corresponde. El Entonces, social media, ¿verdad? Así es. Entonces, And there's more. Nosotros, the two have coordinated verdad, emergency que services. Que es el único lugar de la frontera en donde existe ese tema y también es el único lugar de la frontera en donde tenemos un acuerdo de protección civil en donde los agentes de emergencia pueden cruzar sin tener ningún problema, no les Arizona apoyar o ellos de Nogales, Arizona, pueden cruzar y 
ha sucedido. The mayors are leading work on environmental concerns like air and water pollution. And there's one other important area they have pledged to continue working together, Little League Baseball. They're mixed teams. By National League, you got people living on that side playing uh, on a team over here and people uh, playing on the team over there. But they say it can get tricky figuring out who to cheer for when family members are playing on both sides. Because I, I call them, you know, I call them. Their shared goals are simple work together to make Ambos Nogales a safe and prosperous place to live, regardless of the side you come from. Very often a problem that starts on one side of the border quickly impacts the other side of the border. Here in Douglas, the head of the fire department says protecting the region all depends on him being able to work seamlessly with his counterpart in Agua Prieta. On March 2nd, 2016, we got, uh, received a, a call from um, Mexican authorities. There was a tire fire. We saw it from Douglas. Black billowing smoke, petroleum-based tires, thousands of tires involved, if you will. And usually tire fires last between two days to a few weeks, depending on really? in reinforcements, equipment, water supply, you know, and personnel that are available. Uh, and that's been the norm for many, many years. The Agua Prieta Volunteer Fire Department was in trouble. They needed help immediately. AP Fire Chief Luis Rendon called his counterpart across the border in Douglas. They needed the high power pressure capacity of the Douglas fire trucks. Within an hour, the city of Douglas Fire Department responded to a fire truck with three staff members. We utilized those water tankers to feed our truck to be able to, to uh, give that water and or spray water at the truck's capacity onto the fire itself in conjunction with each other. Within two hours, that fire was controlled. Douglas Fire Chief Mario Novoa and Carlos Arria from the Sonoran State Emergency Response Department used the last Border 2020 meeting to further coordinate future emergency services. Bueno, lo más importante entre Sonora y Arizona es esa eh, hermandad que tienen ambos estados y se ve mejor a lo largo de la frontera. Por eso le llamamos ciudades hermanas. Nogales, Nogales, Agua Prieta Douglas, Naco, Naco, San Luis, San Luis. Y estas eh, relaciones, como ya dijo el chief, no nada más es comercio, juego, turismo, etcétera, sino también la otra parte que es lo que por la misma actividad entre ambos países, entre ambos estados, pues genera en cuanto a riesgos, en cuanto a peligros. Chief Navoa is quick to add that cooperation and communication is a two-way street between the two fire departments. Have they ever helped you fight a fire? Definitely. So we actually had a huge downtown fire in Douglas, and it was about to take the whole city block. We got a call from our Mexican counterparts. Do you, you guys need us to go over there? We're willing, we're ready, we're able. We called our Port of Entry, said, can you please let them through? Port of Entry, you got it, sir. And they came over, eight firefighters came over in one of their trucks and they helped us douse that. We actually lost two buildings downtown, but the whole entire block was saved. In los últimos años, eh, hemos estado trabajando juntos, eh, mutuamente. Muchas veces Douglas, el departamento de Douglas va a ayudarnos a Agua Prieta y otras veces hemos venido a ayudarle acá. Gracias a Dios se ha hecho un acuerdo que hay binacional, donde en caso de un desastre o de algún material que se derrame tanto en Estados Unidos como en México, hay que apoyarnos. We're going to have here Bacet el Hazcat kit. Okay. We have our Mexican counterparts visit our fire department on a regular weekly basis. They come over and talk discuss certain issues, we go over to their side also, but please understand that it's just not Agua Prieta. We actually talk to all the other fire departments around, surrounding Agua Prieta from maybe one to four hours away. And they'll come and they'll meet with us there to discuss cross-border training, certain equipment that can cross. There's equipment on the U.S. side that is, is, is uh, not usable anymore, if you will, or it's past its prime, and we're not allowed to use it due to regulatory uh, issues. 
but it's still good equipment and versus that they don't have the yeah. equipment that they even need to even fight a fire it's better than nothing and so we do that we facilitate the actual transfer of the equipment over to the Mexican side so it could go to the proper fire departments. Wow. Yeah. Y, y um, tienen un mensaje para la gente en Estados Unidos y en México sobre cómo tenemos que trabajar juntos aquí. ¿Qué es el mensaje? Bueno, eh, lo que nosotros podemos decirles a ambos países es que sigan el ejemplo de las ciudades hermanas cómo trabajan juntos, unidos, resuelven en forma unida los problemas propios y del vecino. The border is an unusual place. Tell me what, what you see when you see the border. We see, we don't see two countries. We see a region. The other thing that we see is the camaraderie between all the cities on the border region. I have not been to one border city in Arizona that did not have good relations with the city across. It tells me the, the, the type of people that live there. It tells me the type of people we are in Southern Arizona and the type of people that we want to continue to be for our country and for their country. Looking at the border from hundreds or even thousands of miles away is not the same as actually living and working here. The view is definitely different. Detecting and interdicting terrorists and their weapons will always be a focus priority. Before a recent congressional hearing, Ron Vitello, the head of the U.S. Border Patrol, laid out what he sees at the border. Trafficking of guns, currency, human smuggling, and drugs pose a continuous threat to border security and public safety. But Border Patrol is not the only set of eyes on the frontera. In the border towns of Douglas on the Arizona side and Agua Prieta on the Sonora side, a different vision is being nurtured. It's called Music Without Borders, and for one night this spring, the fence came down. Not physically, but musically. Now picture this, right at the border fence, two stages almost touching, but one is on the south side with Mexican musicians. And one is on the north side with U.S. musicians. The Mexican side would play a song, then the American side. Buenas noches, our first piece. Seth Polly is one of the local musicians on the U.S. side. The hope is that we can come together as two countries. My hope, say to the world that this is uh, we are not enemies. These two countries are not enemies. We are friends, and music reminds us of that tonight. Through the slats in the iron fence dividing the border, we found Laura Rios, one of the organizers on the Agua Prieta side. What we want more than anything is not to have any limits. We want to show that with music and art, there are no borders. And so the night sky was filled with music and goodwill. It flowed effortlessly over and through the 20-foot high steel curtain separating the two communities. It was electric, no, really, literally electric. They had to run a power cable from an office building in Mexico <laughs> through a hole in the fence over to the desert area on the U.S. side to power the stage. And there were activities like playing chess, there were two players facing each other, but there was also a fence between them. The chessboard was on the Mexican side, and through the fence, the American player stretched his arm through to move the pieces. When Seth Polly came across the binational players, his eyes filled with tears. This is a, a moment of uh, unity and uh, gathering together to tear down walls, not to build them up. And through the fence on the Mexican side, several school desks were lined up. Children no more than six or seven years old sat there diligently with their boxes of crayons, creating their mini masterpieces. When she finished, six-year-old Dulce ran over to the fence and tried to get someone's attention. 
Ruth Quinn from Bisbee spotted the little girl. Well, I was just looking at the fence and this adorable little girl in pink signaled to me to come over, so I did, and she handed me this picture that she had colored, and she wrote her name on it. If I can get it right, I think it's Dulce Angelica Ruiz Munoz, wow. and uh, she handed it to me, and we said hello, and we chit-chatted, and her, she spoke in Spanish, and I spoke in English, so I'm not sure if we connected linguistically, but we certainly connected otherwise. And that's what this evening was all about, connecting. What is it about music, Seth, that is the great equalizer? I think it's a common language. I think we respond as human beings to beauty, uh, whatever our culture, whatever our background. And so tonight will be a night of beauty and of celebration of talent and, and those who hear and those who listen and play. There were more than a thousand people gathered on both sides of this border to make a statement of unity. While unity was the main topic, there was also the topic of the ever-present U.S. presidential campaign. I'll tell you what my students at Bisbee High say, and they are, I teach history there, and they are afraid that if elected, Donald Trump will make them leave this country. And my response to them is, are you U.S. citizens? And their response to me is, yes, we are. And I say, well, then no president can do that. I do say to them, however, that immigration status is policy and that those that do not have citizenship are at more risk. Remember that little girl who handed Ruth Quinn a drawing through the slats in the fence? For Quinn, it was a moment frozen in time. This fence itself, it I, it's just feels like a scar to me across Robert? this border, but it's, uh, there's people on both sides and she's just a, a living, breathing person who just wants to, to meet somebody on the other side and, and show her you know, her just love for humanity. So, I mean, it just, it warmed my heart, brought tears to my eyes. At least for this evening, the fence didn't matter. Back in the 1960s, President John F. Kennedy said of Canada, Geography has made us neighbors. History has made us friends. Economics has made us partners. And necessity has made us allies. Today, between the US and Mexico, those same words ring true. That's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Nancy Montoya. Lorraine Rivetta will be back next week.